Hi, welcome dear students. Can you hear me? Everybody? Okay. Hi everyone. Hi, hi everyone. Welcome. Welcome everyone to this dermatology session that we are going to have. I want you to confirm to me whether the audio and the video settings are good enough. Are you able to listen? Are you able to see what's happening on this slide? Everybody good? Everybody good with this? Good evening. Yes. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, chal. good, good. So, so good that uh, we are meeting now with not a lot of time left for the INI exam. Uh, obviously, it's an attempt from all of us that you get to see the previous year's questions because obviously that is so, so important. Now, we have tabulated the last three years previous year questions of dermatology in the INI CT exam, right? So, uh, we are going to do about 50 questions, okay? So, we will do about 50 questions, okay? That is the amount of volume of questions we are looking at. We are looking at a lot of questions, right? I will also be telling you a lot of differential diagnosis. I will also actually be teaching you how to differentiate from the other options. I will also be obviously showing you a lot of images. So, there will be a lot of images, a lot of ruling out other option kind of discussion right so that you get maximum bang for the uh, for the buck right now uh, what we need you to understand uh, uh, mali shetty uh, this is not going to be a teaching session so i will not really be uh, showing you all the flow charts uh, that is a different platform this is a previous year question discussion only where we look at only the mcq which was asked the other options and images and how to differentiate the other options right okay right so i will not really be going into the depth of all the flow charts that i have i make on my own of various diseases and then we go from there that is a discussion like something like a one shot series that we did earlier in that we kind of that's a more better platform for flow charts this is more a better platform for a quick discussion on 50 mcqs right okay so obviously we will be quick Okay, so I am looking at uh, about uh, any time between one and a half hours to two hour discussion here to complete those 50 questions that are going to be discussed. We will not obviously be taking time for each question. So I want you to keep your pace, keep your focus, keep your concentration and keep your mindset thinking that okay, this is really enough to revise all the stuff in one go, right? Are you with me on this? Are you with me, Bache? I'm reading all your chats, I'm reading all your questions, so feel free to correspond with me via chat, all right? So let's begin, okay? It's almost like a T20 match now, right, for this. It's going to be a fast session, it's not going to be a slow session, right? Hi, Ganesh, hi, 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 okay, chat. So let's begin, okay? I'm Saurabh Jindal, I'm sure many of you would know, okay? I have done my MD and MBBS from Grand Medical College JJ Hospital. And I've been teaching dermatology now for PG entrance since the past, <laughs> I don't even remember how many years. I started in 2006, actually. So it's been almost 17 years of dermatology teaching now. So I, I, I come from that background where somehow teaching seems very natural for us as teachers, right? So let's hope you can get a lot of value for the precious time that you're giving me. And I, I honor that time that you're giving me right now because I know you're very close to your exams. And obviously, you're giving me time. I should be able to honor it. And I will obviously try to not disappoint you here, right? Okay. So let's look at the previous year questions. That is the session that we are doing. The PYQs, the previous year sessions of 
माई सब्जेक्ट माई फेवरेट सब्जेक्ट डॉमेटोलॉजी राइट चल लेट स्टार्ट विद द लेटेस्ट लेट स्टार्ट विद द लेटेस्ट आई एन आई सी टी ट्वेंटी टू नवम्बर एग्जाम ओके लेट्स आई गिव यू वन वन क्वेश्चन विच वॉज एक्चुअली आस्ट एंड देन द ऑप्शन ऑन दैट ओके सो लेट्स रुक एट द फर्स्ट वन ह्यूर लेट्स रुक एट द फर्स्ट वन ह्यूर अ ट्वेंटी फोर ईयर ओल्ड डायबिटिक फीमेल विद बायोलैट्रल ब्राउन पिगमेंटेशन इन द एक्जिला एंड ग्रोइन विच आर द फॉलोइंग इज द करेक्ट मैच now whenever you have anything brown in an indian skin in the axilla the first thing that we need to look at is the disease erythrasma ha huh? is the disease erythrasma erythrasma okay now, erythrasma is a disease where the word eri okay the word eri okay means red the word eri means red okay so we expect this to be a red area we expect this to be a red area but in indian skin remember in indian skin it is actually brown so that was the catch in this question you would say eri means red eri means red eri means red but this is not red okay eri means red i'm sure but that's only in foreigner skin in fair skin in indian skin it tends to be a bit brown so that's the first point all of us need to understand you can see this brown pigmentation typically in the axilla that can also come in the groin and that you should know is a corny bacterium infection okay it is a corny bacterium infection okay corny bacterium minutissimum i'm also telling you the potential other questions also which will come so remember the organism corny bacterium minutissimum corny bacterium minutissimum okay corny bacterium minutissimum so it is not red okay but all woods lamps are going to be red and pink okay so woods lamp doesn't change even though the clinical image would be brown versus red clinical image would be brown versus red this is not going to be a wood slime which always red in everyone and you will say coral pink or coral red so the answer is going to be d answer is going to be d coral pink or coral red so always remember red 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 the word eri means red okay the word eri means red and then obviously you will find the patches are red name has red and the coral red fluorescence or coral pink fluorescence is what you would look at in this look at let's look at the other options here the green fluorescence usually will be in tinea capitis we'll discuss tinea capitis later in other questions tinea capitis typically is going to be green fluorescence yellow is going to be petriasis versicolor yellow is going to be petriasis versicolor i hope i am my my uh, my my image is not crowding up this slide i'm i'm just trying to be aware of that so petriasis versicolor is going to be a yellow fluorescence it's going to be a yellow fluorescence that's versicolor that's a malezia disease hmm? that's a malezia disease and this is a dermatophyte disease right dermatophyte disease we'll discuss that later on okay so i'm trying to cover the lateral topics also petriasis versicolor okay blue this is normal the wood slime itself is blue though the color blue doesn't mean anything it's going to be just a normal thing right so the first point you have to understand is this now if the question also gives you some dotted dotted satellites let's assume the same question comes and you have a bit of satellite lesions then the answer would change then the answer would change to candida okay then the answer should change to candida so whenever you see candida because that has satellite lesions got it now typically satellite is wood slime negative woods lamp negative so many times in the in a opd we get a bit confused in the axilla whether that's canada in the axilla because that's also very common because of sweat area canada comes in the sweat areas right and we also find erythrasma in the axilla so how do you differentiate a canada which is a fungus from erythra which is a bacteria one would be a woods lamp canada is a negative on a woods lamp erythrasma is coral pink canada has satellite lesions and erythrasma does not have satellite morphology everybody got this so this is the whole discussion we understood tinea capitis petras versicolor candida erythrasma brown skin disease and indian person having brown color all these concepts get clear with the wood slime wood slime wavelength is remember wood slime wavelength is also very important 365 nanometer uh, wood slime wavelength again that is been asked petriasis versicolor sorry wood slime wavelength is 365 nanometer it's a blue light it's a blue filter that is actually there okay this is just to show you this is the classical red fluorescence or the coral pink fluorescence that we appreciate and the blue part is normal because the light is blue so you're expecting a blue color there as well and this is basically what we are looking at 
in this disease process coral pink fluorescence okay second question second question the mechanism of action of finasteride the mechanism of action of finasteride is now finasteride is a class of drugs which all of us know file productase inhibitor okay it's available oral, oral form also and topical form also topical is 0.1 percent oral is one milligram per day okay one milligram per day we also now have dutasteride which is doing the same thing okay now dutasteride is usually 0.5 milligram per day and seems to be more effective seems to be more effective in reduction file for reductase reduction as compared to finasteride now so answer is obviously going to be file for reductase inhibitor now this finasteride f and d f means finasteride d is dutasteride both are basically used for a condition called as androgenetic alopecia using it for a condition called as aga androgenetic alopecia androgenetic alopecia so what happens here in aga is we know that dht causes the aga okay so what we do is testosterone to dht conversion is going to be stopped okay so you don't make dht with finasteride and dutasteride now that is the reason why finasteride and dutasteride are avoided in females wanting to conceive okay that's also been asked actually why should it not be given because it blocks your file productase right so if the female conceives the male baby is also going to have a block the male baby has a block and that male baby has a block so male baby feminizes and that's what we don't want to do so in a female aga so in a female aga we choose a different option option which is androgen receptor blocker androgen receptor blocker and that is oral contraceptive pill and spironolactone okay oc pill and spironolactone are androgen receptor blockers that you would give for a female aga not so much uh, for a um, for a male obviously you don't give that now, this oc pill typically has estrogen plus a special progesterone which is called as cyproteron acetate write this down cyproteron acetate is the special progesterone which is there in the oc pill so you don't give any oc pill it has to be usually cyproteron acetate estrogen plus cpa cpa means cy cyproteron acetate is what you would give for this or you can give spironolactone so if i just go back this androgen receptor blocker will be what we discussed for a female AGA treatment versus a male AGA and both we give minoxidil also but in females we give the lower strain 2% minoxidil and a male we give a 5% minoxidil therapy we give a 5% minoxidil therapy that we give got it clear understand this I'll try to write uh, on the left side so I can make out sometimes I'm blocking the slide so sorry for that I'm going to just try and put stuff on on the on one side okay right okay now look at this third question vesicular lesions are seen in tell me the answer vesicular lesion what is the answer on this the third question in INICT this time okay now the answer is hand foot mouth disease HFMD now, HFMD is typically caused by Coxsackie virus and we think of it as a childhood disease almost all these children will start getting fever okay and this fever will usually come with mouth ulcers hand and foot vesicles okay hand and foot vesicles so they can't eat typically it's a self-resolving rash it's a self-resolving rash it goes away on its own it comes in epidemics but it goes away on its own okay hand foot mouth disease Whenever you have an HFMD patient, the differential diagnosis for a hand and foot vesicle in a child is going to be infant scabies. Infant scabies also comes as vesicles on the hand and foot. The difference is this will have itch plus without fever, minus fever. So if you have a question where you have hand and foot vesicle on the then you have two differential hand foot mouth disease or infantile scabies infantile scabies itching without fever hfmd itch is absent obviously you will have fever and vesiculation even in the mouth 
enabled to eat right that's what we need to know and i'll show you what it looks like very typically this kind of a mouth vesicle a bit of mouth vesicle here enabled to eat and you can see this vesicular eruption both in scabies and hfmd both but this part will be absent in scabies right you would never have a mouth vesicle you would not have a mouth ulcer in infant scabies plus you'll have maybe a family history which will be positive written in the question all this will be a clue that this is uh yes but oc pills are used in female with aga yes but that is correct that is definitely correct that is definitely correct okay that is correct okay one second one second i'll try to just reduce this one minute huh? just give me a moment okay right so this is going to be an ocpl yes we, we do give that right now what is the second option here roseola let's look at the second option which is given roseola i want to discuss the other options also now roseola roseola the full name of roseola is roseola infantum roseola infantum okay also called as exanthem subitum also called as exanthem subitum subitum it's also called as the sixth disease and the reason for that is it's caused by hhv type 6 human herpes virus type 6 hhv type 6 okay now it's also caused by hhv type 7 but mainly caused by hhv type 6 the word roseola rose means this is going to have red spots all over the body okay exanthem is also a word for that only the word exanthem means a red spot all over the body usually it will have fever and a rash which is usually then self resolved we don't have to do anything about it roseola infantum also called as exanthem subitum caused by hhv type 6 hi good evening samir Bache. good evening good evening good evening okay so that's the roseola just to show you the roseola rash you can see this red kind of a rash okay all over the body in a child usually it happens in children less than two years of age okay it happens quite early right quite early in life okay it's not something which is like an adult disease it's a young child's disease roseola infantum that's what's called infantum okay now uh, one more here the next one is dengue okay dengue now dengue also causes a rash and i'll tell you the mcq on dengue okay the mcq on dengue now now dengue typically has a rash that we call it a, a biphasic rash biphasic matlab there are two phases of this rash okay the first phase okay first phase of the rash is early days of dengue where you have just a red rash a red itchy rash can you see the red itchy rash which is also called as a macular rash flat rash okay that is the red red rash in the beginning and there's also a very typical term white islands in a sea of red what do you mean by that meaning can you see this all red 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 but can you see some white spots so white islands in a sea of red okay white islands dark night which a herald patch is seen in a different disease that is petraeus rosea that's caused that is different that is caused by mainly hhv7 roseola is hhv6 Peter's rosea which will which is herald patch we'll talk about that if you want later on that has herald patch that is petraeus is rosea hhv type 7 that's a different disease okay that's a different disease don't get confused so this is the white islands in a sea of red and that's the rash description of dengue now dengue has a second phase of rash first phase is that macular this is the late phase which happens as bleeding and this happens when the platelets go down okay so there are two phases of the rash of dengue one rash is the erythematous rash second rash is going to be this biphase the second rash is going to be the petechial rash where the bleed starts to come in because the platelets go down later in dengue you know in the beginning there's just a macular rash right abhilasha yes bache dengue rash is itchy it is a self-resolving rash again we don't really do anything about it it just goes away after some time okay right for platelets obviously you have to transfuse Later, this happens in the dengue hemorrhagic fever, the hemorrhagic stage of dengue. Okay. Fourth question. A patient presents with multiple lesions on the thigh and genital area. Okay. Some have umbilication. Okay. 
At the moment of umbilication, obviously, you have straightforward a diagnosis of molluscum. Though, as we'll see later on, there are many lesions which have umbilication. I will talk about that later on. Okay. Now, histology has shown. Now, what I want you to see in histology is this. What I'm drawing right now is the dermoepidermal junction, DJ. Now, this is called the molluscum body. This is called the molluscum body. Okay, which is actually coming out of that small epidermal invagination. Okay, and this molluscum body has also been called as Henderson Peterson body, HP body, or Henderson Peterson body. You can see this molluscum is actually coming out, and that's why they can go to others, and that's why it's called molluscum contagiosum. It is contagious, no, it is spreading to other people quite fast. That's called contagiosum. Contagiosum. Okay, let's look at the other options. Now, this, this is your classical molluscum. You can see a bit of dip and umbilication. Now, can you see the contagiousness of this? Can you see it's kind of increased? It's kind of gone. And if I just show you this area, okay, these are all molluscum bodies, okay, inside infected keratinocytes, okay. And you can see that it is actually extruding. It's actually coming out. It's actually coming out from the tip. And as it comes out, it gets gives you the infection to other people and that's why it's very contagious and that's why we always say genital molluscums are STDs. Hmm? Genital molluscums are typically STDs because obviously it's a sexual transmission because a skin to skin touch transmission that we have and you should be able to identify the molluscum bodies. These are usually red colored okay inside the cadenocytes. I'll use a different color then. Usually it's going to be eosinophilic inside those infected keratinocytes so you should be identify that inside the infected cells and this is the molluscum body that we see okay so that's called henderson peterson body or molluscum body got it molluscum body now what is this other stuff let's look at the other stuff also right now we look at the other stuff which is let's say what is this donovan body then we look at zang cell then we look at coelocytes let's look at all of them okay now typically this is called the donovan body Hmm. Donovan body is inside these histiocytes. These are histiocytes. Okay. These histiocytes have a special name. Can, does anybody know? We call them Pund cell. Pund cell is the name of this special histiocyte which has a Donovan body inside, and that is Calimatobacterium. Okay, I'll not write the full name. Calimatobacterium granulomatis. Calimatobacterium granulomatis. So you should be again be able to identify these Donovan bodies inside the infected cells and these people will usually have a genital ulcer. Okay, genital ulcer, right? And so this is a low power. This is a 40x power. This is a 40x power. The low power, this is Donovan body. You, again, INICT gives you this quite commonly. You should be able to identify these microbial uh, organisms inside cells. You should be able to identify molluscum bodies. Donovan bodies and if you see them on a higher power if you see the same Donovan body on a higher power We get this classical appearance where the edges seem to be more prominent than the center So we call it a closed safety pin appearance. What is it called a closed safety pin appearance on a high power? So remember closed safety pin is not an appearance on low power in the punch cells low power has dots high power has these closed safety pins and that's typically the closed safety pin of Donovanosis Donovan bodies in Donovan osseous. Okay, don't confuse Donovan bodies with LD bodies. LD is Leishman Donovan bodies, that is Leishmaniasis and PKDL. But this is Donovan body that's actually different, right? And this is just to show you the herpes zang cell. This is the grouped vesicle. Okay, I'll show you all these grouped vesicles. And these are grouped ulcers. So there are two presentations which will come in your exams for herpes either a grouped vesicle or a grouped ulcer okay and you get a zang cell what is a zang cell a zang cell is called mng mng stands for multinuclear giant cells mng is multiple can you see multiple nuclei inside the single cell multiple nuclei inside a single cell right so this is going to be like this okay this is going to be like this okay and that's a mng multinuclear giant cell also what is a zang cell in herpes okay dr stephen uh, vesicular rashes have uh, quite a lot of differential we'll keep on covering them as we go along this is this is this is one vesicular rash that we have herpes obviously which is a genital std this is hsv type 2 okay hsv type 2 creating that 
HSP type 1 also causes it, that creates herpes labialis. So that's the second cause of a vesicular rash, right? Others also will keep on talking about as the discussion progresses, we will keep on adding to that list, okay? I'll not give you the entire list at this time, but we are discussing them as we go along. I told you infantile scabies also has vesicular rash. I told you the hand, foot, mouth disease also has a vessel. We have covered already four vesicular rashes in dermatology, but we'll keep on adding to that list as we go along, okay? Now, this is just to show you the what which is nothing but condyloma accumulator, okay, condyloma accumulator. All images for accumulator usually will be pointed watch. These are, can you see the pointed watch? Usually caused by HPV 6 and 11. So HPV 6 and 11, how do you identify them in histopathology? You have to see what is called as coilocyte. Coilocyte. In a, how do you identify a coilocyte? Coilocyte has a keratinocyte, but can you see this empty space? around that nuclear so that's called perinuclear empty space what is it called perinuclear empty space you know? that's a sign of a infected keratinocyte so there are three situations here you spoke we spoke about zang cell which is mng multinode giant cells we spoke about coilocytic chain we spoke about henderson peterson body we also spoke about donor one bodies and that's what we know as how to identify these situations right now, uh, that was question number four, right? Yeah. So, this is question number five. Okay, this is question number five. A young man presents with linear lesions as shown. All the following can cause this spread along lymphatic. So, these are called as nodular lymphangitis. Nodular lymphangitis means what? What is lymphangitis? Inflammation of the lymph vessels and nodules formation. And nodule formation. Okay, and nodule formation along that okay that's called nodular so there is going to be an organism which enters and this travels like this linearly upwards along the lymphatic that's called nodular lymphangitis nodular lymphangitis now sporothrix is a typical organism doing that and this is why sporotrichosis sporotrichosis is obviously a disease which causes this every mcq usually would mention farmer and gardener that's usually a clue to the sporotrichosis disease, farmer and gardener because it's a soil pathogen. Now, nocardia also is a cause for nodular lymphangitis. Now, staph is not a cause for nodular lymphangitis and microbacterium marinum is also a cause. This is also called as fish tank granuloma or swimming pool granuloma. Fish tank granuloma or swimming pool granuloma and the occupation usually a fish handler or a swimmer. Right? So, this you have to keep in mind. So, there are three diseases coming along the lymphatics. One is sporothrix, one is nocardia, one is mycobacterium marinum and that staph doesn't, what staph causes that we'll talk about very soon. That's, there's a question there also but we'll talk about that as we go along. Okay? Got it? Nodular lymphangitis. Treatment for this is oral itraconazole. Treatment for sporotrichosis oral itraconazole and usually there's a thonpic history in the question that we have we got it okay question number six okay a patient presents with fever and a black scar now what's a scar scar is a thick crust can you see this thick crust okay thick crust the likely diagnosis now crusting and scar formation in dermatology happens with a condition first of all called as ecthyma Ecthyma is a deep staph infection, okay, deep staph infection, okay, that's called ecthyma. Ecthyma, it's a deep staph infection on the skin, that's one cause. Second cause is something called as scrub typhus. Scrub typhus, this is a bacteria, okay, again it's a bacteria. The bacteria here is usually by a bite of a mite. Okay, so the mite, okay, sir, what's on any body part due to HPV are communicable? Yes, okay, basically all are communicable. Okay, Mitra, botryomycosis, bache, we'll talk about. I'll, if you want to know botryomycosis, I'll tell you botryomycosis when I come to the disease called as mycetoma later on. I'll tell you about botryomycosis bache at that time. Abhilasha, yes, all what's are communicable. Okay. So, this answer first of all is scrub typhus. I'll explain scrub typhus a bit more right now. Okay. Now, scrub typhus is basically caused by a bacteria. 
Orientia Tsutsuga Mushi. Nice name. I love to say this name. Okay. Now it's caused by the larval mites called as chiggers. So they basically bite into a particular area and they deposit this bacteria inside and that's why you want to give doxycycline very fast to these people otherwise they'll have a lot of trouble they'll have fever headaches and very typically escar i've had so many patients admitted now in medicine department in my hospital where they just go to a particular trek okay for example they go to a mountainous area or they camp outdoors they get a bite from a forest area and when they come back they all they don't realize the bite because a small bite and the bite this is the bite site okay there's the bite area they would not realize okay and they'll have fever headaches and it's obviously you need to admit them give them doxycycline five quite fast that's how we can look at scrub type is very typical scar common question also what about this first one rocky mountain spotted fever okay r m s f rocky mountain spotted fever the name itself tells you spotted fever matlab the area will have red spots the name itself tells you red spots with fever it's called rocky mountain spotted fever it's a rickettsial organism okay this is a bacteria which is rickettsia okay and this usually happens with the tick bite okay so the mite creates the scrub typhus disease the tick creates rsmf rocky mountain spotted fever and usually it's an acral rash acral matlab ends of the body hands and foot will have this rickettsia disease and again even anthrax yes bachche yes yes definitely anthrax can also give you uh, a, a crusted black lesion bacillus anthracis usually used now in bioterrorism bioterrorism right so it is very typically typhus anthrax it's quite common to get that uh, though anthrax is obviously not very very common but rsmf and scrub typhus are quite quite common yeah get this okay now 60 a 60 a seventh question sorry a 60 year old man presents with progressive lesions as shown the diagnosis this is very typical rodent ulcer question not a difficult question for any of you to answer rodent a typically rodent ulcer comes on this above this line see this line this line is from the the tragus from the ear to the angle of the mouth tragus to the angle of the mouth above that you have the lesion usually in an old person okay usually you will have this ulcer which rarely metastasizes so that's again a question you don't have metastasis for this this is basically basal cell cancer old people getting this okay because and you can even see the fair skin can you appreciate the fair skin fair skin has what we call as chronic dna damage you know so it takes time now that's why these people are old by the time they get the disease so rodent means it's a very destructive ulcer and these destructive ulcer typically has what we call as beaded remember these words rolled pearly edge see the words that we're using very important words beaded rolled pearly edge that's the edge for a bcc disease okay that's basically basal cell cancer okay ramya bachche both options will not be given don't worry okay which options are you if i think you're talking about the the scar question no both options will not be given okay basal cell cancer obviously it is squamous cell cancer usually would be a more hard cauliflower mass that would be more classically the squamous cell question and not be like a rodent ulcer stuff melasma obviously is not even in contention because that's a pigmented lesion dle i'll show you the image later on what dle looks like that's again a different it doesn't really create an ulcer dle doesn't create an ulcer so that's again not a question on this eighth a female with history of Raynaud's phenomena now when we see Raynaud's usually 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 you think about ctd connective tissue disease okay many connective tissue diseases come with Raynaud's, which is just a blue vasoconstriction initially there's paler then a bit of blueness so this blue skin blue fingers blue toes on cold exposure because of vasoconstriction of your acral vessels that's called Raynaud's phenomenon yeah now skin thickening now skin thickening is a classical sign of systemic sclerosis okay systemic the word sclerosis means something is tightening up okay there's more collagen in the skin so tightening up and when you say breathlessness matlab you're possibly looking at interstitial lung disease which is again a sign of systemic sclerosis because it's systemic right so sclerosis enters your lungs and then it, it creates constriction it's a restrictive lung disease 
here and this image is a typical image of what is called a salt and pepper pigmentation salt is white pepper is brown salt and pepper pigmentation and that typically is a salt and pepper of systemic sclerosis okay a vitiligo would not have a salt and pepper it will be only white leukoderma is only white contact allergy is allergy so that's obviously itchy but this is salt and pepper very typical image for systemic sclerosis systemic sclerosis and just to show you some other features also of systemic sclerosis usually we call it mask like face why mask like tight face okay now the muscle is not a problem the reason the skin the you cannot make expression because the skin is so tightened you need loose skin to make your expression to smile you need loose skin right if your skin is tight you can't even smile you can't even raise your eyebrows so it's a very tight kind of a mask like face the mouth opening also is reduced so we call it fish mouth like how the fish has a very small mouth so what happens is the skin is so tight on the lips area that they can't even open so their mouth opening which you can measure by fingers becomes smaller and smaller and smaller so it's very difficult for them to eat even the esophagus starts to get sclerosed so esophagus motility would also go down so they would say that doctor i can't eat properly because it gets the food almost gets stuck in their throat and that's typically what is it okay now the fingers have what is called as sclerodactyly yeah? sclerodactyly matlab the fingers become very pencil like almost drumstick like it's very tightened fingers okay so can you see this contractures also now starting to come in hai na? and these are your digital necrosis okay this is your digital necrosis huh? which is happening one second bache. okay so this is your digital necrosis which is happening hmm? and this you can see this necrosis that's because the blood vessels are not you know giving out vessels uh, been giving out blood into the acral zones so you can see a bit of necrosis also happening digital infarcts okay happening in this situation as well okay got it clearly okay now eighth or other ninth question okay this is a ninth question okay okay sorry about my pen somehow giving me a bit of problem okay give me a moment please give me a moment okay just a moment just a moment please i'll try to see about my give me a moment just a second Just a second, give me a moment. I'll try to see if I can just somehow get my pen back. Huh? Ek, ek minute. I'm still here okay I'm still here give me just a moment I want to just get my pen back online huh? just give me a moment please I'm sorry for this unexpected error just give me a moment please I think you can still hear me right so just stay there okay I'm reconnecting my pen okay right so let's look at this now let's look at this now okay uh, next question next question a patient presented to you can you hear me now can you hear me and see me patient presented to you I have still lost my pen uh, connection but I don't want to stop the session so good the good point is I have all everything written so that that is a good saving grace for me okay I just hope it starts somewhere in between Okay, sometimes technology can be like that. Okay. Anyway, the ninth question now. 
okay ninth question now uh, a patient presented to you in the opd with blackening of the hands after recent epi episode of uh, amoebic dysentery for which medicine was taken what can be the reason for such a condition right now typically what we know is uh, see the first the moment they say amoebic dysentery the moment they say see what i focused on okay now see this is just my modification okay now because i <laughs> i somehow can't use my pen okay so oh my pen has come back thank you oh god is very kind <laughs> okay so amoebic you know sometimes you know when a teacher loses the ability to use use his pen you can't believe what it feels like it feels as if somebody has just cut your hand suddenly almost make you know i remember you know when when i lose the ability to write with my pen i almost feel like that thalidomide baby you know who's phocomelic phocomelia baby no hands no feet what vulnerability you would feel so if i if i don't have a pen i feel like that okay so this is amoebic dysentery for which medication was taken now the moment you take you have amoebic dysentery you would want to use possibly the stenidazole or ornidazole yeah or metronidazole yeah okay now this would be a fixed drug eruption typically you can understand some blue areas here okay it can happen anytime very common site will be lips but here the lips were not given here you would have the uh, dactylitis due to winters is a features of Raynaud's Raynaud's have many manifestations okay uh, dactylitis is one of the manifestations of Raynaud's but what you are referring to is possibly chilblain okay Abhilasha what you are talking about is possibly chilblain which happens in winters Raynaud's is something that happens for a few minutes and goes away but chilblain continues for many many days even weeks that is a different vasoconstriction Raynaud's is just a temporary vasoconstriction okay so now this is what is very typically fixed drug eruption the color is your clue okay now the 10th question now which of the following is a scarring alopecia now this is remember ns means non scarring this is an autoimmune disease right it's an autoimmune disease right we have an autoimmune disease here right so non scarring typically it will be a small patch okay of complete i am giving you these important words complete hair loss okay and this is sparing of the white hairs sparing of the white hairs in the patch okay so complete hair loss sparing of the white hairs Telogen effluvium usually there'll be a history of typhoid given or history of COVID given and after three months they have hair loss that's called or there'll be history of chemotherapy given no no chemotherapy will be anagen effluvium sorry so this is three months after COVID and typhoid anagen alopecia you'll be given a history of thinning of hairs and this will be that pattern baldness we call it pattern baldness which we are going to see after some time what it means pattern baldness so this, all, the, all this is non-scarring this is fibrosing the moment fibrosing the word fibrosing means scarring so even if you don't know what is frontal fibrosing alopecia you still know there is fibrosis there so that's obviously scarring so obviously that's a simple question even if you don't know the topic you can still answer this properly okay okay 11th question 11th question a patient presents with itchy white lesion of the genitalia the likely diagnosis now this is white Whenever you have, we have white lesions, you have two differential. One is vitiligo, obviously, and one is a disease called as lichen sclerosis. Lichen sclerosis. Okay, lichen sclerosis. Now, lichen sclerosis typically is a genital lesion usually, and it creates sclerosis means it's going to create tightness. See, the word sclerosis itself means tightness. So there's more collagen deposition. On the genitalia, interestingly, it also creates a lot of itch. Now, vitiligo is always non-itchy. You will never have vitiligo itchy. Plus, because the skin is tight, the vaginal introitus is going to be shrunken. Okay? So, there's going to be a shrunken. So, sexual activity is going to be very difficult. So, this lichen sclerosis, not vitiligo. And this is a pre-malignant condition. Okay? It's a pre-malignant condition. It's a pre-malignant condition, so we have to take care that this doesn't become a squamous cell cancer. So that is lichen sclerosis, it's a different disease than vitiligo. You don't want to confuse that because itch is your clue. Itch is your clue in this particular question. Okay. Okay. Twelfth now. Twelfth question. A patient presents with recurrent itchy erythematous plaques over the scalp and sacral areas. History of joint pains. Nail finding had pitting. 
nail finding had pitting joint would mean psoriatic arthritis right and scalp means sebo psoriasis scalp means sebo psoriasis and this would be obviously be no question on this okay there is a very simple and this is the pitting okay that you get in psoriasis obviously there should be no question on so these are the 12 questions we had i9 november 22 lot of questions session 1 session 2 lot of questions actually came okay Achha, one more sorry 13th there's one more remaining for i9 november a farmer comes with nodular lesions on the foot when we have farmer we are looking at a barefoot person with thorn prick nodular on the foot microscopy has shown now this was what is called as sclerotic bodies also called as copper penny bodies okay okay copper penny bodies sclerotic bodies okay copper penny bodies and sclerotic bodies okay now what is the uh, pick the true statement let's look at picking the true statement picking the true statement look at the first one now blood invasion is common in those with hematological malaria not at all now this the disease that you're looking at here is chromoblastomycosis you're looking at what chromoblastomycosis the word chromo means color that's why they are colored spores these are called as these are called as pigmented spores what am i saying pigmented spores pigmented spores okay so you can see this brown pigmented spores clear now blood invasion is not common because it's a, it's a subcutaneous fungus it's a fungus in the skin okay it's a fungus in the skin it's not a blood fungus it's not a hematogenous spread at all so the first is wrong dimorphic organism no the word dimorphic means there are two morphologies depending on temperature okay depending on temperature if you give it one temperature it's a it's a different uh, form one temperature different from yeast form mycelia form so that is temperature right so that's called dimorphic fungus that is not chromoblastomycosis dimorphic fungus is sporotrichosis sporotrichosis is a dimorphic fungus this is demataceous fungus we call it demataceous fungus demataceous means melanin producing fungus the word dematation means fungi which produce melanin and that's why it is going to be brown okay doesn't involve the fascia tendon muscles doesn't involve the fascia tendon muscles that is correct i told you it's only a subcutaneous fungus so the answer here is the third one the answer here is this one okay i'm just kind of going to give it a color you know, so you would know okay you would know okay one second one second one second okay so this is your answer the c1 does it involve the fascia tendons and muscles now these are dead fungi engulfed by macrophage is not correct these are just not dead fungi these are spores of the pigmented organism and that's why the answer here is the third one looking at chromolastomycosis okay now inict may 22 inict we have covered all the november exam questions now the may exam questions let's see if you can answer this a patient with satellite lesions presents to you satellite skin lesions so when you have satellite skin lesion you're looking at borderline tuberculoid bt hansen's he also has one hypopigmented lesion and one thicker nerve okay so one lesion and one nerve so moment you have one lesion and one nerve okay one lesion and one nerve now tell me the answer bache. okay one lesion see one no moment you have one to five lesions you go into pb category and if you have one nerve again go into the pb category correct we know that classification is called the classification for from who for mb and pb classification pb and mb classification got it okay got it now this would be pb so pb would be what tell me pb would be what now we don't give packet a at all packet a is gone we don't use packet a at all it's always the packet b means always a red packet so it's possible bacillary packet b for six months packet b for six months are you with me on this possible bacillary packet b for six months clear got it okay question number two match the following this was match the following now silvery scales brani scales mica scales call red scales the silvery scales we know would be psoriasis no question on this brani is again no question petrous versicular we also call it fine scale or powdery scales or brani scales caused by petraeus versicular mica like is seen in plc plc is a chronic condition 
the exact reason is not known why PLC comes. It's an immunological dysfunction. It's an immunological dysfunction, right? And typically it creates what is called as my I'll show you what a mica-like say scale would look like. I'll tell you show you what a mica-like scale would look like. Okay, mica-like scale. Okay, now colored scale is seen in Petriasis rosia. Colored scale means a scale on the edge, like a collar of a shirt. That's called colored scale. Okay, so that is. A2, B C, B3, C4, and D1. Right? So the second one is your answer for this. Okay. Match the following. Okay. Now this is a mica like. Mica is basically this kind of a material which is extracted very and it's often used in a lot of decoration. Mica. Okay. And this is the mica like, also what is a wafer like, mica like scale that we see in Petriasis lichenoid chronica. You don't have to know too much about it. Apart from just one term, Petriasis lichenoid chronica has mica-like scale. That is it. You don't have to know too much of pathology and stuff about PLC. Nobody asks you PLC apart from the scale. Okay. Now, for starting chemoprophylaxis in leprosy, now what is chemoprophylaxis? We call it SDR, which is nothing but single dose rifampicin. Single dose rifampicin. Okay, SDR is single dose rifampicin of 600 milligram single dose. Now that is called as leprosy contact treatment. So if I have leprosy in the family, other people should get SDRs. Now which requirement condition should be met? And this was an unusual question actually. Now these are multiple choice questions. Okay, sometimes these unusual questions keep on popping up, but don't get scared about these questions. Usually they are not repeated. The common questions are what you prepare for. Okay, now uh, multiple choice questions. Now age should be more than two years okay this is a bit of a controversial question because the proper guidelines are not really there age should be more than two years that is correct that is correct anybody more than two years you should be able to uh, to give this now living with a patient for more than six months obviously right when you're living with anyone for a long time you're obviously going to have more transmission so even if you don't know this guideline this is common sense right now Close contacts for 20 hours per week is a guideline which WHO does give out. Now, this is never been proven. Okay. Now, some books, some uh, do say clothing and towel and all that, but you no, know, practically speaking, it's not something which is for SDR. You don't really need this kind of a thing. So, I think my answer would still be the D option on this, though it is a bit of a controversial question. Some faculties answered differently, some answered differently, but my point was. Uh, the third, the fourth option would be the, the best option out of these which are not really just because I, I share a towel with someone that's not the reason I get it. But for example, you know, if you are kind of in the gym, I'll just give you an example. Okay. Now in the gym, you are going to have a contact of half an hour with somebody who's got leprosy and gives you a towel. You take a towel and put it. So are you going to get rifampus in there? Not really. Right. So this is what we need to know. Sharing same clothes, towels, not really a, a, a very big factor. It's never really been proven on this. Okay. Uh, though I searched for it honestly and I did find some references for clothing but it was it is not in the guideline I mean it's not in the WHO guideline for sure okay now uh, fourth uh, a pregnant female had type 2 lepra reaction best treatment for her would be now, whenever you have ENL and type 2 lepra reaction obviously you cannot give thalidomide there's no point of antibiotics uh, you have to add steroids okay there's also wrong you cannot stop MDT you should never stop MDT Okay, you should never stop MDT here. Okay, you should give steroids, but continue the MDT. That's very important. You continue the MDT and lepra reactions, you have to give steroids. Okay. Now, this is, see this now, this question. Okay, this question, let me just take it up. Put us here. Okay. Now, a forest worker, again, you can see this thorn prick stuff. Okay, thorn prick stuff. History of what a cauliflower would mean chromoblastomycosis. Chromoblastomycosis usually comes with cauliflower like masses on the foot. Histology is nothing but again the same copper penny. So copper penny has been a very common question. I think you should really prepare for it well. Okay. The histology image is off. Okay. Now the cost, the, obviously the answer is sclerotic body. Okay. Now it's encapsulated body in yeast. No, it's not the, 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 the sclerotic body doesn't divide by budding okay doesn't divide by budding okay basically just splits into two like how the equator is there in between 
we call it septation it divides by divides by equatorial separation not by budding what is equatorial septation if this is the equator like in the center no it just kind of splits in the center like how an equator is in the center septates in the center through the center line that's called equatorial septation that's how it is, it is not by budding yeast the splendor hopley phenomenon is seen in sporotrichos we'll talk about that soon sporotrichosis has splendor hopley what is splendor hopley now in sporotrichosis there's a f mother fungus in the middle and in that around that fungus you have these lines these are this is called as asteroid body alternative name for asteroid body is splendor hopley phenomenon alternative name for sclerotic body is splendor hopley phenomenon okay now this is so the answer is straight away sclerotic body you don't have to really do too much of thinking on this straightforward question okay chromoblastomycosis sixth a patient has lesions as shown and this is typically herpes zoster okay we can see this dermatomal dermatomal and you can can you see this it's stopping at the midline it is always a unilateral lesion and the reason for that is the nerve stop in the midline the intercostal nerves would stop in the midline right the diagnosis and patient mentioned spider crawled now interestingly a lot of times when people people say spider crawl but it's not spider it's herpes getting reactivated so obviously there's no question on this it has to be a dermatomal zoster chicken pox will be all over the body that's the first point and it will not be not be along the dermatome right plus you would expect a bit of fever to come in in chicken pox and usually this chicken pox is called a central rash what do you mean by a central rash matlab it spares the palm and the sole now this is how you differentiate by the way from hand foot mouth disease and infantile scabies hand foot mouth disease would also have fever but will be on the hand and the foot chicken pox is also having fever but it's not involving the hand or the foot it's a central rash not an acral rash got it that's a typical herpes zoster seen in people who are more than 50 years of age and now there's a herpes zoster vaccine now which has come in so if you somebody is getting old you want to give them a vaccine of herpes zoster not chicken pox mind you which can then prevent the recurrence and reactivation of this disease okay theek hai this again a vesicular rash somebody asked me the dd of vesicular rash there's also a dd of vesicular rash even chicken pox is a dd of vesicular rash even herpes zoster is a dd of vesicular rash again this will have multi nucleate giant cells on a zank smear okay so usually zank smear is done for diagnosis if you are if you are confused you can do a zank smear on this theek hai seventh a 10 year old presents with arthritis of the knees and lesions on the dorsum hand is shown the diagnosis is and this is typically a purple rash of dermatomyositis theek hai dermatomyositis dermatomyositis also has the same purple rash around the eyes that's called heliotrope rash same purple on the back of the upper back and outer arm this is called the shawl sign so purple here is shawl sign purple around the eyes is heliotrope and purple on the knuckles is dermatomyositis and this has been called as gotrans papule and that obviously is gotrans okay purple papules on the dorsum of the hand they also have a bit of photosensitivity so that's again the reason why they have it on the dorsum of the hand because that is where the sun exposure really comes in right and the scleroid actually would be in, in system sclerosis with renards and everything else and all that digital also as i told you sle would have a millar rash okay sle would have a millar rash meaning it will be on the cheek it will not be around the eyes got it okay now uh, november ct i i na november 21 now okay so you have completed two exams november 22 we did may 22 we did now let's get back to november 21 let's get back to november 21 a patient from bihar had history of very high grade fever he later developed symmetrical lesions on his back without any nerve thickening and without any sensation loss the diagnosis is now the moment you have bihar you have two one is pkdl and one is leprosy two differentials pop into the head okay now high grade fever would support the pkdl history because every pkdl history person has a history of leishmaniasis in the past that's called visceral leishmaniasis visceral leishmaniasis usually has fever right later they get pkdl he later developed symmetrical lesion on his back without nerve so that without nerve also would be pkdl 
without any sensory loss would again be PKDL, right? There are a lot of clues to PKDL in this question, okay? So there is no problem. And then now, versicolor, why not versicolor? Versicolor is always hypopigmented or hyperpigmented, but very importantly, around the follicles of the chest and the back. Around the follicles of the chest and the back and usually scaling on scratching. That's called scratch sign. Scaling on scratching, that's called scratch sign, and you will have a Wood's lamp positive. Pitreous vesicular is a Malaysia disease, Wood's lamp positive. Okay, Wood's lamp positive. Why not see Pranay, which uh, Manoj, Manoj, which question, Bache, are we talking about? Why not see? It is C, PKDL. First, it is C, all right? Okay. Now, uh, lepromatous leprosy typically would not have high grade fever. That's the first point I don't think that would be there. Plus, it will have also nerve thickening. No? Okay, there will be some nerve thickening, some nodular lesions, all that LL. Manoj, which question are we talking about, Bache? Achha, are you talking about this question? Now, SLE, Bache, never has, are you talking about SLE here? Is that, is that there? Now, SLE doesn't have these Gottron's papule, Bache. Okay, if this is the, this is the question that you are referring to for your doubt. Okay, Manoj. Okay, so let's get back to this. Right, clear, got this? PKDL question, easy. What would be tubercular leprosy history? Tubercular leprosy would obviously have a lot of sensory loss. Okay, you always have sensory loss plus thick nerves, okay, plus a bit of hypopigmentation, plus a bit of hypopigmentation, okay, sensory loss, plus thick nerves, plus hypopigmentation, got it? Okay, now this is just the BL leprosy, BL Hansen's, bilaterally symmetrical lesions for BL, same is going to be the picture for hypopigmented P PKDL. That the image does not change. Image is the same between them. The only difference is this will have thicker nerves, this will not have thicker nerves. And BL will not have a history of fever. This will have fever. So I can write that down. Fever minus nerves. This is nerves minus fever. Did you get that? Nerves minus fever right nerves minus fever do you see the difference both are from bihar up both are from bihar up got it obvious okay here minus sensory loss there's no sensory loss this is going to have nerves and sensory loss got it got the difference between bl anson and pkdl okay again this is the same bilaterally symmetrical almost symmetrical patches but this is either BL or hypopigmented PKDL, both are possible. Diagnosis usually this time you will want to do a LD body demonstration from a gene sustain. Okay, from a gene sustain and oral miltefosin will be your drug for PKDL. Post Kalas are dermal leishmaniasis, PKDL. Okay, now all the following can be used for acne except. Okay, now this was acne. Okay, question number two, I'm talking about November 21. Okay, this was acne, obviously. Now, benzoyl is a drug for sure. Now, oral retinoic is also a drug for sure. Tazerotene is a, is a topical retinoid. So, retinoids are obviously given. Now, what we don't give is this, the second option. The second option is a steroid. In fact, steroid causes acne. Okay, we call it steroid-induced acne. We call it steroid induced acne. Steroid induced acne. Think I got it? Steroid induced acne. Clear? No confusion on this? Okay. Benzoyl peroxide usually is given for antibiotic resistant acne. If the antibiotics don't work, then we can give it. We can also use in pregnancy. Benzoyl is safe. Category C in pregnancy can be given. You cannot give tazeroutine, you cannot give oral retinoids in pregnancy. Okay, asymptomatic, asymptomatic lesions occur in a child with lesions on the dorsum hands and shaft of penis diagnosis. Now, what we have here is very typically called pinpoint papules. Pinpoint papules, 
and if this question says dorsum of the hand and the penis there's no differential on this these are typically asymptomatic papules on the dorsal hand and the shaft of the penis this is just a lymphocytic collection on these areas it's just a cosmetic concern scabies would very easily be itchy lp would be purple lichen scrofosum is a tuberculosis Papule, so there will be some history of tuberculosis, some focus of TB inside, it will not really be localizing only to the dorsum of the hand and genitals. Okay, this is just to show you LP. Can you see the difference? It's much larger papules. It's not pinpoint papule. Plus, it is typically purple. Plus, it will be typically itchy. Okay, it can come on the dorsum of the hand. Nobody says no to that. But it usually has these purplish lesions, not pinpoint. Can you see this was very small and pinpoint? this seems to be much bigger okay okay now this is scabies all of us know scabies typically a web involvement with sometimes a burrow here which is then going to be positive green on wood slamp okay you'll have to have a papule visible and usually this will have a lot of itching which is nocturnal itch okay we call it nocturnal itch scabies papules got it Drug of choice for scabies we know is 5% permethrin, single overnight application. Okay, we use single overnight application here, right? Now we use head to toe treatment for infants with scabies because infants have face involvement and neck to toe. Then you have adults with the same scabies because adults do not have facial involvement. Plus adults have only papules. This has papules plus vesicles. I told you that acral vesicles, the differential diagnosis for hand and foot mouth disease. Got it? Okay. A female, portion number four. Female comes with profuse vaginal itchy discharge. Profuse definitely means trichomonas. That's a word which helps you to choose trichomonas. It is itchy. Even candida is itchy. But candida is always minimal. Okay? We call it curdy, creamy, white. See the words. This is usually green. Strawberry cervix also supports the diagnosis of trichomonas. There is no, no question on this metronidazole. Okay. Metronidazole. Got it? Acyclovir would be if it was herpes. Azithromycin would be used in many conditions. Chancroid gives you, you can use this, you can use it for chlamydia. Okay, you can use a very condition. Donovan also gets azithromycin. Okay. So, this is just to show you the green frothy. It's also called frothy and also profuse. And this is the strawberry cervix. These are the bleeding, bleeding points, hemorrhages on the cervical and cervical erosions would also be there. Okay. Is itching high with Canada or trichomonas? Both have itching, but both have itching. Drug of choice, all PID means? I didn't understand your question, but Abhilasha, you'll have to frame your question in a different way. Any way to remember the kit and the color? Uh, that's, you'll have to make your. I remember usually, uh, I, I used to now, so I, I remember easily. But I used to remember green discharge, green frothy was trichomonas, na? So that is just the green kit for vaginal discharge. Okay? The green kit for vaginal discharge. And just for remembering, just for remembering, uh, we know grey kit is for urethral discharge, now. What the cause for urethral discharge? Remember gono? So G and G, that's how I used to remember these two kits at least. Okay. So gonococcus is covered by the gray kit. And we'll talk about the gray kit in detail later. But just I'm just trying to tell you how to remember it. How to remember it. Green kit is for gonococcus. Now gonococcus will go to the cervix also. Okay, so even cervix and it can all go so go to the urethra also. Right? So both urethral discharge and cervical discharge both get a grey kit. Are you with me on this? So just remember gonococcus. Just remember gonococcus. So you know the grey kit right there. Samajyo? Samajyo kya kya na chara? Okay? Understand what I'm trying to say? Everybody got it clearly? Grey kit, did you understand grey kits? 
Understand gray kit on this? Yes? Okay. And I used to remember B and B. Bubo black kit. Okay, I, that's how I remember this. Okay. DOC for pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease, bacha, you want to know pelvic inflammatory disease drug of choice. PID is covered by the yellow kit. Okay, yellow kit has a gonococcus coverage with cefexime. It has gram positive and gram negative bacteria coverage with doxycycline and anaerobe coverage with metro. This is the is what we give. Okay, got it clear. Okay, now 65 year old man comes with itching, articular lesions, and bullet on red as well as normal skin. The diagnosis is now the moment you have old. Whenever you have an old person, whenever you have an old person with a blister, don't think too much. It's usually bullous pemphigoid. Okay. And usually they always have articular like lesions also. Quite severe inching. And usually it comes on red skin as well as normal skin. So blister will come either on a background of redness or normal skin. And usually these are tense blisters. Usually they are itchy blisters. And these are subepidermal blisters. Subepidermal blisters. Subepidermal blisters. Okay. Now this is typically bullish pain. Why would it, you not call it DH? Now DH is also itchy. But DH has no relation to old age. DH does not have articular lesions. Okay. In, we'll talk about DH a bit later. Bactyl vaginosis usually we give uh, either secnidazole usually or metanidazole or tenidazole. Canadiasis usually fluconazole. Okay, Abhilasha? Fluconazole for canadiasis. So this is bullous pain frequent. Okay? Got it? Okay. So this is just to show you the tense blisters. Tense blisters and see the background of redness. That red background would be usually the clue for bullous pain frequent. Old people getting this disease. Okay? Now sixth. A 20 year old female unmarried with history of irregular menses, straightforward PCOD question. Hirsutism, again that means there is more DHT formation, which is a sign of PCOD again, right? Uh, Krish, you don't have to remember, worry about this question that you just asked. Nobody is going to ask you IGA pen figures, forget that please. Whoever told you and whoever taught you uh, did not know what to teach you. If you have read it from a coaching institute, don't do that. IGA pen figures is is something which you should never even know about. For LIGA, you have to know. LIG, you need what is called as cluster of jewels appearance. Cluster of jewels appearance means the blisters come in a ring. That's much you need to know for LIGA. Don't remember IGA pen figures. Ovarian volume is more than 10 cc. That's again a sign of PCOD. Initial treatment will be all except. Now, we don't want to do laparoscopic ovarian drilling as an initial sign of PCOD. This is a multiple choice. This is all except, right? So, you want to give OC pills and we know that OC pills will be estrogen plus progesterone. The progesterone will be either cyproteron acetate or drosperinone. Okay. CPA means cyproteron acetate and then is drosperinone. Estrogen remains the same. Lifestyle modifier definitely because you want to reduce insulin resistance by weight reduction. Spinal lactan also is helpful because it's an androgen receptor blocker. So what you don't want to do is laparoscopic drilling. Got it? Okay. Now this is just to show you acne. You can see hirsutism see, almost looks like a male. Because they're getting a lot of hair. They have acne. Especially this acne again, is a, there's a clue to that. There's lower face acne. They don't come on the forehead so much. So PCOD acne, hormonal acne is more towards the lower part. How do you remember? Lower part has hair and lower part also has acne. They are also usually obese and the obesity is because of insulin resistance. They usually have a bit of acanthosis nigricans also, meaning a bit of black skin on the axilla and the neck, the face. This is called as acanthosis nigricans, which is again a sign of insulin resistance. 
Okay. A farmer comes with a history of thorn prick lesion occurs along the lymphatic drainage. Now, this is obviously a almost a standard repeat question. Obviously, you don't have to even think about it. It's typically chromoblastum, uh, sorry, sporotrichosis, sporotrichosis, okay? So, I'll not discuss this. We already discussed it easily. Chromo, just an image for chromo. These are cauliflower muscles, okay? And we already know now they will have these sclerotic bodies, muriform bodies, copper penny bodies, medlar bodies. These are the names for these bodies, okay? Got it? Okay. Now, this is just to show you cryptococcus. Now, cryptococcus lesion looks like molluscum. I'm going to make a slide for you. I think that'll be better. One second. Now, see, if you have an umbilicated papule plus no internal involvement, okay, then you will answer it as molluscum, which is a virus. Now, if the same umbilicated papule will have CNS involvement with basically meningitis. You will answer it as cryptococcus. Cryptococcal disease. And if the same stuff comes with lung involvement, then you will answer it as histoplasmosis. So, in all the three, you have umbilicated papules. This is in AIDS. This again is in AIDS. Meaning it's an AIDS defining illness. It happens with very low CD4 counts, less than 200. When you have AIDS and then you can have this systemic involvement and these are molluscum diseases. Got it? And this is then, it looks like umbilication if it's zoom in. Can you appreciate the umbilication? It looks like molluscum. But if you have a CNS neck rigidity or something of that sort, so cryptococcus neoformans, you will isolate that from the CSF. Okay. Godavari, I will explain how to differentiate chromo from madura foot. In Chromo, you have this mass. If this was mycetoma, you have to add a sinus and add a grain. These are two things which a mycetoma will have more than chromoblastomycosis. Okay? Got it? Okay. Now, this is again a big cauliflower like mass. Okay? Okay, which can come sometimes. This is again a bit of chromoblastomycosis, but these images will not really come. What you just need to know is, is the overall concept. Okay, now eighth, a 60 year old patient comes with painful lesions. Again, we have done this so many times, no question. We are not even discussing this. So, can you see one thing that there's so many questions which there's a common trend to these questions? Okay, there's so many questions like herpes is so commonly asked, molluscum is so commonly asked. Sporotrichosis, mycetomas, chromoblastomycosis is so commonly asked. PKDL is very commonly asked, right? Okay. Now, INICT July 21. INICT July 21. Okay. A female comes with unilateral lesions as shown in the image. She also has leukotrichia. So, when you have leukotrichia, you look at vitiligo. And when it's unilateral, matlab it comes in a segment. If I just show you the image, can you see this? You can kind of join it in a segment so obviously it is segmental the focal would have only one lesion and you cannot connect it in a straight line so you will not call it photo focal vitiligo you would be more easily calling it segmental vitiligo okay so simple question no question on this now nevus depigmentosus usually is hypopigmented it is not depigmented plus no leukotrichia it did not have white hair basically it will go to be a birthmark and the nevus is a birthmark. Pybaldism is white, but it comes usually on the forehead. And it again is a congenital genetic disease. There is no need to know too much about pybaldism. But the point is, if it's linear, it's easy to understand why it will be segmental. Literally. This is focal and focal. Even if you have two lesions in focal, it will be on opposite sides of the midline, not connecting in a straight line. This would be segmental in a straight line. So this is obviously something that we say. Segment really. Okay. Second question. A adult presents with itchy hyperpigmented plaques exudation. Exudation is a typical sign of oozing, which happens in eczema because there is a bit of spongiosis in people in with what is spongiosis? In between the keratinocyte, side, there is water. That's called spongiosis. Spongiosis is basically fluid in between keratinocytes because normally in between keratinocytes there is lipid. The lipid is lost in eczema, so you have fluid and that comes out as oozing. 
टिपिकली एडल्ट्स हैव फ्लेक्जर इन दिस इज द फ्लेक्जर नो पॉपुलेटियल फोसा इवन द फ्रंट ऑफ द एल्बो एंटीक्यूबैटल फोसा दिस विल बी टिपिकली एटॉपिक डर्मेटाइट इज वाई इज इट नॉट सोराइसिस सोराइसिस यूजली विल हैव नो एक्सुडेशन विल बी नो ऊजिंग इन सोराइसिस प्लस वी एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी ऑन द एक्सटेंसर्स विल नॉट बी ऑन द फ्लेक्जर क्लियर सिंपल क्वेश्चन ओके now this is just to show you the images now typically in children it'll come on the cheek okay that is the classical side you remember cheek area for children and for adults it's the folds sometimes even the hands can get involved but it's the folding areas okay the front of the elbow antecubital fossa okay this will be called as a antecubital fossa right this will be the popliteal fossa this is in adults that's how it will be involving And usually there will be a history of atopy in the family or the patient, right? Vitamin A deficiency would be on the extensors, on the elbows, okay? Not on the folds, not on the flexures. Okay, okay. A patient present the lesions as shown. Let me just put this here. Okay. Now, if I just show you the lesion, okay? If I show the lesion here. If I show the lesion here, now this lesion has been called as punched out. So can you see the center is normal, and the edges are seem to be seeming to be active. We also call it annular lesions, or Swiss cheese lesions, okay, or punched out lesions, okay, and that is the typical sign of BB Hansen's. Borderline borderline Hansen's is a typical disease where you have this. Now, if you have these annular lesions with a bit of scale on the edge. Let's assume you have annular, but with a scale on the edge. So annular plus an edge scale. Then you don't call it BB Hansen. Then you call it tinea or pityriasis rosea. There are two diseases which have annular with a scale on the edge. Okay, tinea and pityriasis rosea. But if there is no scale on the edge, then you will call it BB Hansen's leprosy. BB Hansen. Okay. So if I just go down, go to the question. Okay. Let's go to the question. Okay, now this is borderline leprosy. You can simply call it borderline leprosy, which is also called as mid borderline. BB is mid borderline. We also call it mid borderline leprosy. Okay, got it? You will have annular usually in borderline, borderline meaning mid borderline. Okay, fourth, a patient comes with lesions. Patient comes with lesions. A biopsy was done and the image is found. This is a very common image again, which comes. these are the three zones corneum granulosum and spinosum and a gap which is a suprabasal split and this is the row of tombstone okay there's a single layer of cells below the split and that would usually be pemphigus vulgaris classical image pemphigus vulgaris theek hai pemphigus vulgaris a suprabasal split of the disease theek hai obviously no confusion on this theek hai okay This is the row of tombstones, multiple vertical cells visible in the basal layer. Hmm? Row of tombstones appearance. Fifth, a patient comes with patchy hair loss, itching, and scaling on the scalp. Now, if I zoom into this image, it's a very interesting image. You can see first of all, it's a child. Child is a clue for tinea capitis. Never answer it for adults. Only answer it for children. Okay, if I zoom in now. Can you see some dots? Can you see? Can you see these dots? These black dots. So we basically call this black dot tinea. Black dot tinea capitis, usually caused by the Trichophyton species. Usually caused by the Trichophyton species and KOH. Hair loss is again a clue because of something called as easy pluckability of hair. Okay, the hair is very easy to pluck. because and that's why you get a bit of hair loss non inflammatory you give them griseofulvin or you give them terbinafine and the hair comes back okay right this is what you would give okay you got it okay now match the following okay this is again a uh, std question green kit would be vagina discharge remember the green for trichomona just for remembrance i just told you that some time back so green discharge 
so then you will take talk about gray gray kit is remember the mnemonic of gonococcus g and g okay na the yellow we just said is lower abdominal pain yellow is for pelvic inflammated we just covered that ha huh? now white kit is genital ulcer non herpes because white is syphilis okay white is syphilis okay white covers syphilis and chancroid okay white covers syphilis and chancroid syphilis gets benzathione penicillin chancroid gets azithromycin hmm? so this is now the kit that we buboca we know it will be black general herpes will be red got it clear these are your kits now this is your red kit for genital ulcer h genital ulcer herpes okay this is the bubo this is the genital ulcer non herpes if you are allergic to the white kit if you are allergic to the white kit meaning you are allergic to benzathione penicillin then you will take the blue this is the gray for urethral discharge and cervical discharge green for vaginal discharge and yellow for lap means lower abdominal pain you get that clearly okay a patient comes with painful vesicles on genitals histology you know the way we have vesicles on genitals always what we hsv2 herpes genitalis herpes genitalis theek hai and obviously with that we have no question on this zank we know this would be donovanosis pun cells we did cover we know this is going to be molluscum we know these are going to be warts clear this is just the grouped vesicle now grouping is a classical sign of herpes the money of grouping you should mark it as herpes vesicles grouping pain everything is suggestive and this is just to show you some images we have seen this image but still this is a zank cell okay just for comparison this is your donovan body your donovan body right this is your typically molluscum body and these are perinuclear so these are coelocytes so in one slide i showed you all four okay uh, uh, one slide i have shown you all four i'll just take it to one side so that you can see it well these are the coelocytes now okay so that is the four uh, hp bodies and donovan and zang that you want to know okay november 2020 now okay november 2020 okay november 2020 okay i think this will be the final set if i am not mistaken for the question that you want to do november 2020 all a patient presents with painful ulcers at the glans penis now the word you have remember you have pain okay what are the options that you have now syphilis remember is painless okay so that is the first point you will rule out there is obviously no syphilis in this even donovanosis happens to be a painless ulcer so that's also gone so what happens in pain we know that chancroid causes a lot of pain and herpes causes a lot of pain right now chancroid will have no vesicle that's how you differentiate and this will have vesicle that's how you differentiate plus it's always going to be recurrent herpes is always recurrent this is not recurrent okay so now which of the are correct hemophilus ducreis chancroid obviously correct herpes simplex obviously correct chlamydia causes urethral discharge that's one thing it does one thing it one more thing it does it creates lgv disease nigeria creates only urethral discharge so this one and two are correct is what you would answer on this where do we do zank smear you break the blister of herpes take the liquid do a gemsa and look for those zank cells okay Now this is just to show you the chancroid lesion. You can see this ulcer. Usually these are multiple ulcers in chancroid. Multiple painful soft chancre. 
typically with a bubo which is usually unilateral meaning one sided bubo so you'll have a lymph node here in the inguinal area which is going to be very painful okay this is going to be the chancroid disease please tell about coelocytes okay coelocytes basically are i'll tell you coelocytes also you want to know coelocytes so if hpv goes in to the keratinocyte okay there's the nucleus around the nucleus you have empty space that's a sign of an hpv entering the the nucleus this is called as a coelocytic change a coelocytic change coelocytic change theek hai got it okay now this is just to show you hsv grouped vesicles often recurrent this also creates a bubo so bubo is positive both in chancroid and and hsv but in chancroid there will be only a ulcer directly okay and this is going to be a vesicular lesion in the beginning okay this again is a grouped ulcer because the blisters were grouped in in herpes even the vesicle and ulcers are also grouped in herpes it's just to show you the discharge whenever the discharge you will think of it as pus think of it as gonorrhea but if it's mucopus you should answer it as usually chlamydia okay so the difference between them one is gonococcal urethritis one is non gonococcal urethritis got it consai the treatment for this is usually remember cefexime drug of choice and this is usually going to be doxycycline as a drug of choice got it now see what are what all are seen in chancroid listen to very very carefully what is seen in chancroid now chancroid typically has bleeding yes or no tell me yes painful yes groove sign no because groove sign is seen in what which is lgv school of fish correct so what is this 1 2 and 4 can you see this typically 1 2 and 4 are you with me on this 1 2 and 4 got it okay got it clear now a patient has central clearing and peripheral redness and shown central clearing and peripheral redness as shown okay the morphology would be annular morphology would be annular meaning a ring lesion ring lesion of dermatology got it right now what is targeted what is discord let me show you that also you can you see the annular with the scale on the edge theek okay? hai that's usually a tinea disease or a petraeus rosea disease clear so annular with the edge scale annular with the edge scale discoid would be again circular without central clearing are you with me on this without central clearing got can you see there is no clearing in the center which lesions cause discoid remember discoid eczema discoid eczema and one is one is discoid lupus erythematosus discoid lupus can you see the dle typically a sun exposed rash typically a sun exposed rash with a carpet tack sign with a carpet tack scale of dle are you with me on this carpet tack scale of dle and that is the dle disease that you have discoid lupus erythematosus theek hai target lesion also called as bullseye lesion or iris lesions seen the disease called as erythema multiforme which is a herpes induced lesion herpes induced lesion this is due to target or target lesion sorry so target lesions usually has three zones 1 2 and 3 theek got it target lesion usually has an hsv history or sometimes even a drug history mentioned okay now this is targetoid can you see two zones bache and that is seen in toxic epidema necrolysis or steven johnson syndrome typically a drug rash so target would be herpes targetoid would be tn and steven johnson's theek hai about airborne contact dermatitis short form is abcd theek hai the gold standard diagnostic would be this is parthenium induced parthenium induced and usually you do a patch test to test for parthenium and sunlight this is what you would do patch test is what you put a patch on the back 
and test for parthenium and sunlight that's called ABCD airborne contact dermatitis also called as phyto photo dermatitis what is it called bache phyto photo phyto means plant photo means sun plant and sun dermatitis okay okay a farmer present with foot swelling and sinus somebody had asked me how mycetoma looks this is the sinus can you see the sinus huge what a bad looking disease right and this is going to be a mycetoma you will have a sinus there and you will have a grain there if the grain is black then you call it fungus and if the grain is white then you call it actinomycetes actinomycetes okay so grain sinus and swelling we call it mnemonic is gst grain sinus and tumor what is it grain sinus and tumor everybody grain sinus and tumor is a mycetoma also called as madura foot madura foot and this is the grain can you appreciate the grain can you appreciate the grain coming there this is a dimorph this is basically a fungus which is subcutaneous a subcutaneous fungal infection either actinomycete or eumycetes okay okay this is porotrichos we already know multiple times now this is a wart okay wart can also come on the foot again cauliflower like mass but doesn't have a sclerotic body basically has a poilocyte okay six now a 20 year old man 20 year old man with history of sexual exposure present with painful lesion in the genital areas the microscopic examination would be now this image is of a molluscum can you see this molluscum papular lesions with a bit of dip in the center so obviously this will be henderson peterson body okay henderson peterson body and that is obviously we have done this multiple times again okay got it right seventh a patient presents with multiple itchy tense itchy blisters in the inguinal area lower abdominal thigh biopsy revealed this is a good question biopsy revealed neutrophils in the subepidermal area okay now whenever you have these neutrophils in the subepidermal area that is a papillary tip microapsis what am i saying papillary tip microapsis very typical okay neutrophils in the subepidermal area and that is papillary tip microapsis suggestive of dermatitis herpetiformis what is it called as dermatitis herpetiformis and the answer for this would be bache dapson dapson is a drug of choice for dermatitis herpetiformis and obviously it has a lot of itchy blisters itchy blisters in the subepidermal layer this is typically what we know as the dermatitis herpetiformis disease got it rituximab if is is if you would think of pem figures this is not pem figures for sure theek hai a patient present with extensive psoriasis covering 50% of body surface with no systemic features all the following can be treated with modality except now one thing you have to know is steroids it's a simple question we don't want to give them what steroids na right got it because then now it's 50% involvement then they'll have what 90% involvement and then they'll be very you know a lot of troublesome situations there you can give them methotrexate you can give them cyclosporin you can give them naroban uvb don't give them steroids okay we don't have to really explain this too much right now we are almost coming to the end this i think is the last question you want to do a patient present with macular papillary rash the drug responsible a prednisolone is a drug for a rash for a rash obviously we don't want to give it it can doesn't cause a rash salbutamol not really common fexofenadine is an antihistamine it doesn't cause it ampicillin group of drugs this is the image given a big rash with penicillin group of drugs a very common penicillin ampicillin drug and that you would want to do tell us the answer for this particular condition got it clear right so with this we are through with 50 questions okay we did 50 questions of dermatology in what time good time good time i wanted to be quick actually today so no no baat idhar udhar ka na no we didn't do any idhar udhar ka baat because i am famous to do that also because i i throw in a lot of stuff when i teach but today it was a very targeted session it's almost like a target lesion today so i just wanted to drill the only the topic and we didn't go you know we don't didn't do a lot of time pass so uh, no talk here and <laughs> no talk there but theek hai that's how the the schedule is and we wanted to be very quick and we wanted to be very fast 
right so that is what we wanted to do so uh, give me a give me an update give me a quick shout out on whether whether you you liked what we did and how we did it we took about 1 hour 40 minutes you know what time did we start uh, yes we did we take we took 1 hour 40 minutes uh, to finish uh, this a whole gamut of questions we did three year questions so it's three years okay uh, shruti uh, i know uh, i i in, i deliberately did not know any motivation today because you know i can speak 1 hour 30 minutes only on motivation also <laughs> right so uh, so uh, ashika oh your my analogy is bus depot loc rockets turtle rabbit are my favorites okay cool 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 yeah. So, uh, so good, good. So, I am happy that uh, we we uh, we could do whatever we wanted to do, right? So, it was it, it is a session which I believe is the see we do various types of sessions, right? Now, one session I did quite recently, which was only motivation, and and that's there on the DBMCI platform. Okay, so if you just scroll down for my name, it was a one hour only motivation session. I didn't do any dermatology on that day. It was only a one hour straightforward motivation. Okay. So today we do we did one and a half hours or more than that of pure dermatology. Yeah. And uh, what I need you to know is uh, there's always you cannot combine everything in every session, right? Okay. Uh, one thing I just I just want to just say one or two things before I really close down for you uh, is that I did that in before the NEET exam also. I actually interviewed a lot of students before the NEET exams. You know, but what happens is for most institutes, when you get a good rank, everybody comes and takes your interviews. What I did was, I actually was, was there with the student before the NEET exam. In fact, in the last 15 days of the NEET exam, before the NEET exam, I did one-on-one -on -one counseling for many students. And the common theme which came out from many students was, Sir, mujhe kuch yaad nahi hai. I have forgotten everything. The stress is so much. And I'm always so stressed and always so anxious about what is going to happen. Whether this exam is going to be good for me, not good for me. So what I know is, and that's true for me also, that on the days I, you know, I feel very stressed sometimes, let's assume on some day. And if I just think, why am I feeling stressed? Stress has never been about today. Stress has always been about the future. And you, you always have that also. You just judge that for yourself. Just, just kind of ask yourself. If you are stressed, what are you stressed about? Are you not stressed about the future? So today has never been stressful. Future has always been stressful. Kya hoga? What if I don't succeed? What if I don't do well in life? What if I remain where I am? What if people laugh at me? What if my friends go ahead and I don't go ahead? Are you with me on this? So what I know and I have, I have kind of rephrasing it from Dhoni. I, I heard his interview once and Dhoni was asked, how are you so cool in those stressful times? You know what he said? He said that stress only comes when you think about what is going to come next. So when he's playing a ball, if he's thinking, oh, whether we will win, whether I'll hit a six, whether I'll remain the captain, what will happen to my team? The moment he thinks about the future, he will become nervous. The moment he thinks about the ball and the bat, that's it. Such a simple analogy. Think of the ball, think of the bat and think of the hit. That's it. The once your complete thought process is in the moment, you will never feel stressed. And he's trained himself to be like that. So what if I tell you that please train yourself to be the bat and the ball? Meaning what? Just train yourself for your book in front of you and the contact you have with the book. That's it. These are the only two things you are supposed to think about. The moment you stop that thought and the moment you start thinking what is coming, then you will get scared and then you will get anxious, then you will get panicky. So most of the students I counseled, I have only got panicky because of what is coming. It, they almost become very uh, negative about what is coming next. What if I tell you a Celine Dion song and the song is beautifully and the words of that song is, I can't wait for the rest of my life. Do you have that sentiment for the future? What if you try to have that sentiment? Would you feel stress? No. You'll say, oh wow, something nice is coming. And if you say, oh my God, 
a demon is coming then your shoulders shrink and your shoulders droop and that is when you lose energy and then you lose concentration and guess what the more panic you are the lesser memory you have try to remember something when you are panicky you will not remember only no so all your hard work will go zero because you are stressed and anxious and panicky and, and, and awaiting a bad result so what if your entire focus is effort and your focus is not result then you'll become like Mahinder Singh Dhoni and you're so cool and you're almost smiling that okay I have won the day today will take care of itself sorry tomorrow will take care of itself so what you have is today and I just want you to stay in today and that is really how winning is done for anyone for example I have 100 things I can be stressed about but the moment I feel, oh, today I'm here, I'm teaching you, it's a contact between a student and a teacher, or oh, I'm teaching dermatology, or oh, I'm doing INICT, or oh, I'm doing this. So that is where peace comes. Peace doesn't come from tomorrow ever. Peace always comes from today. And peace doesn't even come from today. Peace comes from the moment you are in. Are you with me on what I'm trying to say? So the only short, short way to do well in INICT is to be within the confines of the today's life and space. The moment you jump like a rabbit in front of you, then you will kind of lose the race and then you falter, then you then you kind of break, break and then you have a lot of trouble. So be calm. It's easier said than done, I know. It's difficult to be calm at this stage. But practice meditation in the morning. I'm saying this to everyone. Download an app called as Life Fast. Do that 15 minutes every day in the morning. I do that very regularly. And I know I'm very calm because of that 15 minute investment I have in myself. So many of you say, I don't have time. That's such a wrong sentence to say. It's almost like saying, I want to drive my car, but I don't have the time to go to the petrol pump and fill petrol in my car. You think your car will even run properly? So you have to invest something into yourself to be able to get efficiency out of your body's machine. So that investment is 15 minutes of meditation and 15 minutes of some form of movement exercise. So do some, some movement, some exercise, some dance, something which is away from studies and guess what? That half an hour investment per day, it's going to become two hours of extra efficiency throughout the day. So it's, it's a no-brainer. It's one of the best things you can do for your concentration and memory. And no matter what happens, don't live a regret life. You know what's a regret life? See, if you don't get a good result, you are going to be okay provided you will feel that you could not have studied anymore. Provided you will feel that I can't prepare for this much. I can't prepare for this much. So if you have a bad result on this wavelength, then you will say, let's go, I can't prepare for this much. But what if the results come bad and then you analyze yourself and say, I could have done better. That's a bad regret to be in life. So what we know is regret has never been with a bad result. Regret has always been of an incomplete effort. So always be 100% honest in the effort that you're giving. And even if then you have a bad result, you take it. You say, okay, I can't do anything. I don't, I don't have anything more in my control. Yes. You got what I'm trying to say on this? Right. So with this, I don't think we have too much of time, Bache. I don't think we have too much of time for the motivation angle. But if you want more of that, get to the uh, video I recorded so one hour video and in that one hour video I just opened my heart out okay and that video I think was labeled as what next after NEET you know after the NEET exam I recorded that this year that if you feel sad about your NEET exam how should you plan ahead what should you do what should be your mindset how should you think when should you sleep what should you do how should you read how should you plan all that is there in a separate video all that is there in a separate video and I want you to just put that in your heart and, and do this to yourself. You know what is this? I love this and I say this all the time to all my students. All of us are so eager to give likes to other people. We give likes on WhatsApp, likes on Facebook. You did well, you did well. When will you start giving likes to yourself? Before you did well, before saying you did well, you should say I did well. And then this pat on the back is more important than pat to someone else. We somehow don't pat ourselves and we keep on becoming emptier and emptier in life and we keep on giving out accolades and, and, and good things to other people. Give that to yourself first, Bache. Yeah? Satya, thank you, thank you, Bache, thank you.
थैंक यू आई पर्पजली डिड नॉट डू एनी मोटिवेशन इन द बिगिनिंग बिकॉज आई वॉन्टेड टू फिनिश फिफ्टी क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑब्वियसली एंड एट द एंड काइंड ऑफ यू नो दिस इज समथिंग दैट माई हार्ट लाइक्स अलॉट दिस इज दिस इज द वेव लेंथ आई लाइक अलॉट वेर आई काइंड ऑफ जस्ट बिकम लाइक अ जम्पी रैबिट एंड जस्ट टॉक टू यू अबाउट वॉट माई 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 फीलिंग्स आर एंड माई इमोशंस आर बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ अस अनफॉर्चुनेटली हैव बिन टॉट टू सप्रेस इमोशंस एंड फीलिंग्स बट ह्यूमन्स आर नॉट क्रिएचर्स ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट humans are creatures of feelings and emotions even if you become a very big person even if you become very successful in life what you'll really struggle with are challenging emotions and challenging feelings and those challenging feelings will remain no matter how big you become in life even if you own a mercedes even if you own a maybach or mean even if you own a ferrari you will still have that crumpy heart you'll still have that fragile heart if somebody criticizes you you will feel bad even if you are in a ferrari are you with me on this somebody appreciates you you will feel good even in the ferrari so it's not about the ferrari it's about your feelings and what your heart tells you yes got it and i would just love this space so i never feel like stopping this space you know when i have this one to one heart to heart interaction and i say this all the time इसको मैं बोलता हूँ दिल से दिल की बात तो दिस इज नॉट माई माइंड सेइंग ऑनेस्टली दिस इज दिस इज वॉट वेर आई ओपन माई हार्ट आउट ऑन दिस पब्लिक प्लेटफॉर्म बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ अस हैव बीन टॉट टू जस्ट सप्रेस वॉट वी फील ना वी आर टॉट टू से दैट नो आई एम आई एम अ बिग टीचर ऑफ डेमेटोलॉजी एंड आई हैव बीन टीचिंग फॉर सो लॉन्ग सो आई शुड नॉट फील बैड आई हैव गॉट एवरी थिंग गोइंग ऑन फॉर मी वाई डज दीपिका पादुकोन फील डिप्रेस इन लाइफ शी हैज एवरी but guess what that's what i'm saying it's not about what you have it's about what you have inside your heart and you can have challenges in spite of the best positions you're going to be in and i feel a lot of us need management of feelings more than management of subjects okay because what we struggle with is not subjects okay what we struggle is is, is controlling ourselves and controlling when our heart is not doing what it wants to do sometimes you just feel very bad you get up in the morning you just don't feel like studying you just don't feel like doing anything you just feel like lying down on the bed you feel so negative you want to then grab a piece of cake you want to grab some chocolates to feel better you want to just escape yourself in netflix and and whatsapp communications you want to scroll on instagrams these are all escapes from the challenging world all of us face sometimes and that is the space i want you all of you not to escape from but to get into that space it's okay to suffer because suffering does end believe me it does we don't know when it ends it ends and there's going to be a, a, a nice thing after that suffering you'll appreciate the morning though that much better once you have had a long night people who don't have a dark night don't appreciate the morning sun people who have had a dark night can only appreciate the morning sun so i want you to listen to this very important thing that i want all of you i know all of you are humans you are not students you are humans and that's how i treat you i don't treat you as students learning dermatology i treat you as humans with feelings who get bored also sometimes who feel sleepy also sometimes who don't want to study dermatology also sometimes who will say ki yaar maza nahi aa raha aaj so that's how humans are we are we are a messy bag of emotions right get this and i i hope with meditation and with movement and with trusting yourself you go ahead and you thank the space that we create some day where we say yaar dermatology to acha aapse pad liya tha humne ye jo baki cheeze aap kehte ho ye bhi hame bahut help karte and that's one one thing i want to hear sometime when i meet you sometime in life and i hope you become a dermatologist one day and come back to me and say ki sir main to derma pad gaya bahut maza aaya aapse padhe the ab derma bhi kar rahe hain so so i would continue to shower my blessings on you even at that time theek hai chalo enough of this extra talk <laughs> i call it extra curricular activities you know we used to have extra curricular this is extra curricular activity chal so with this okay uh feel it to heal it yes but what a wonderful sentence you have said feel it to heal it if you escape from feelings you would never heal once you feel the feelings even if they are bad feelings that's the only way to heal from them yeah you want to communicate something i'm 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 here for two or three more minutes and now you just express yourself please express yourself if you feel nice just say something here you know whatever you want to express there's an open forum now 
okay it's you and me let's open up that space try and say what you want to say don't and this is this is what we i want you to learn i want you to learn expression i want you not to suppress your feelings and and vent it out take it out and you will instantly feel lighter you know it's like that friend sometimes you just talk something to a friend and you feel so nice even though they have not given any advice but venting feels very nice if you can tell something to someone and you feel they are not judging you that is a beautiful space to be in i somehow you know uh, i have a word for this i call it non judgmental listening see this word non judgmental listening okay so if you listen without judging the person look for a friend like that look for a relationship like that that's the biggest gift you can have in life a relationship which judges doesn't judge you a relationship where you feel open enough to say what you want to say you this and i i i i love to love to interact with students because you know what i have gone through these very tough phases in life and i'm not saying me everyone has even if we are teachers even if you think we are on this side see when i was in your side i used to think oh if i get dermatology life will be so beautiful then i got dermatology then i thought oh, no no if i pass md they'll be so so beautiful then i passed oh if i get a good marriage it'll be nice oh if i get a good practice it'll be nice so challenges are in every phase of life you just feel that they are enjoying and i am not enjoying and that happens from facebook when they show you some big and they're like oh they are enjoying so much i am not are they are worse than you so don't think you are bad all of us are in a messy ocean all of us are in the messy ocean you know what all of us are in a ocean where we are doing this up and down in the ocean but all of us are rocking in the ocean don't worry i am also rocking in the ocean you are also rocking in the ocean all of us feel we are going to fall it's just that we are in different boats i am in a different boat you are in a different boat but we are in the same ocean and that ocean is the ocean of challenge yeah i'll give you a saying before we close if you can run run if you cannot run walk if you cannot walk just crawl then whatever you do in life you better be moving every day so there are some days you feel lousy and you can study only for 15 minutes it's okay at least read for 15 minutes that's the best you can do on that day some days you are rocking and you study for 10 hours but don't expect that you're going to be reading 10 hours every day nobody does that even toppers don't do that be true to yourself and no matter what you do one thing you have to do is do this to yourself be proud of the journey that you have already taken aap yahan pe aaj ho na mbbs karne ke baad yahan pe aaye ho that was always a struggle you are someone already you some of some most of us feel that we will be somebody once you get an md seat once you get an ms seat once you get a dm seat once you get an mcs seat once you have a good practice once you have a good car but guess what even if you get it you will still feel incomplete and then this so you know what i should i want you to think don't think you'll be someone once you get abc you are already someone you are already a respectful person whom other people are already looking up to you just don't feel like it that's the only thing but other people look at it from your parents eyes look at it from my mother's eyes look at it from your father's eyes they are so proud of you though they might tell you 100 things ki tu kya karta hai tu kya karta hai but guess what you know what they'll be really proud in front of their relatives ki my son my daughter is a doctor you have to see the glint in their eyes when they proudly think of you as their achievement and you are an achievement you are a piece of art already you just need a bit of chiseling okay you just need to do a chiseling and you a masterpiece is soon going to come out why don't you trust yourself and there is something called as blind trust you know what's a blind trust blind trust is trusting yourself even before the results come see everybody is proud of themselves after the result has come a topper will always be proud of himself but are you proud of yourself in the effort phase not in the result phase are you proud of your efforts rather than your results 
If I can study for 10 hours today, if I plan for 10 hours and I study for 10 hours today, I'm already proud of myself. So be effort focused, not goal focused. And that's how really winning is done. Yes? Chalo. Good. So I'm happy all of you were with me in the curricular session, the extracurricular session also. So with this, I would take your leave. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, been, it's two hours now. We have exactly clocked two hours, right? We started at 8.30. It's 10.30 now. I'm sure you might be a bit tired also. Okay, though I am not. And these these heart-to-heart -heart talks do give me a lot of... some Somehow ATPs come in from somewhere. I don't know from where to get this through to you. Chat. So you can continue to chat, continue to write something if you want to write in. Okay. Uh, I, I love to hear your comments. I love to see your comments. So that's, that gives me a lot of joy. Okay. Uh, to see this. Uh, actually, I'm not well today. Actually, uh, I'm having fever. So uh, it's been a challenge. I've taken a lot of antipyretics before this session. Okay. It's been a, a physically challenging day for me today. It's been, uh, but anyway, I, I just get very excited when I teach. So that's, I never wanted to miss that stuff part of it okay so chalo i think we did everything we finished the session on time okay chalo take care god bless and i just genuinely wish no matter what happens to your results you always be proud of yourself okay thank you